Today we're going to talk about 316 gravity tubing. In a tubing, if you have a column of water, the force of gravity will obviously draw water downwards, which will create a vacuum. For each foot of vertical drop, we create about 0.88 inches of mercury of vacuum. So the more elevation we get, the more slope we have, the more we can maximize our vacuum level. This basic principle allows people who do not have power or do not want to get into a big install with vacuum pumps to still get very good performances and do much better compared to bucket collection. Then it can also save you some work, especially when you are in steep terrain and it's almost impossible to go and collect sap with buckets. With tubing, you can bring the sap near your trails, either in barrels or in a mainline network to get it as low as possible. The results we gather from the experience of our customers who have installed 316 tubing, regardless of the slope they have or their actual production, are always a, at least a little better than collecting with buckets. In terms of material costs, if we compare with buying a buckets, spouts and covers, it's actually cheaper to install 316 tubing system, including all the tubing, spouts, tees, all the way to the collection barrel. The 316 tubing being 30% smaller in diameter than the 516 tubing, it means that for the same volume of sap in your tubing, you are going to have a longer column of water. Now, with a longer column of water, it means you are going to have more elevation and in theory, more vacuum. That's basically our goal with the 316 tubing. The other principle is that in a 516 tubing, if you don't get a big run and you don't have a lot of sap in the 516 tubing, the sap and the air can separate. So in some cases, at the start of a run, for example, you may lose your vacuum when the air goes above your drop of sap. That's impossible with 316 tubing because of the surface tension of sap. The tubing being smaller, water and air simply cannot separate inside. So you're going to see your drop of air and drop of sap come down the tubing side by side and even the air compress a little on the way down. This is a big advantage of 316 over 516 tubing. At CDL, we offer spouts with 316 adapters. The standard max low 316 spout at CDL requires a hole drilled with a 1964th bit. If people want to use the CDL line of spouts for 516 tubing, it's possible to use a 516 drop line and connect it with the rest of the 316 tubing at the T. That gives you access to the full range of 516 spouts that are available at CDL, including the 516 signature spout. Now, when we start connecting the trees with the tubing, we shouldn't go too wide, just try to go down. The best explanation I give to customers is that you can make an S as you go down the slope, but try not to make a W. The idea is that if you cut your slope, you'll slow down the flow of the sap in the tubing and you're probably gonna use a lot more tubing than what you actually need. You are better off running a new 316 line parallel to the other one than going out of your way to get trees that are too far away. This is the basic concept for installing. The other principle, of course, is to get the maximum from your slope. Ultimately, there are two options that are available for that. First one is to bring your 316 tubing lines into either small tanks, barrels, or larger barrels. The other option is to bring your 316 tubing line into a main line and to run that main line down to a big main collection point, or even in some cases, directly to your sugar house. When trees start to run, you're going to have very little sap and probably a lot of air bubbles. The way to see your, if your system has leaks is to check the speed of those air bubbles. When you have a lot of air bubbles and you see them moving down the tubing very quickly, it usually is a sign that you have an air leak. Keep in mind that you have a network of 316 tubing and you want to benefit from its natural vacuum, it has to be airtight. So if you have air come into your system, it means you have leaks. We know we want as much of our 316 tube as possible filled with sap. 
So we wonder how many tabs should I put on each line? Do I have to put to stop at 15? Do I have to go up to 50, 60? The idea is to fill the tubing. If our tubing is full of sap, we will get the maximum vacuum. In theory, the goal would be to reach complete vacuum, which is about 29.9 inches. In reality, we know we are going to have leaks. We know that there are, will be friction loss, but we know that vacuum levels around 27 and 28 are easily attainable. Obviously, we have to get our system tight. We have to chase leaks, but ultimately gravity helps us to get better yields. I always keep an eye on my customers who have switched to gravity tubing. The first year, they install two, three lines and see what it does. In the end, they all do their own experiments, but they all come to the conclusion that it's totally worth it. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe and press the notification icon to get updates on new product videos.